Hey guys, I wanted to cover a pretty cool combination uh, today, uh, Moongus and Mega Tyranitar. Right now they are flying kind of under the radar, and so I think they have a lot of potential to really strike pretty hard soon um, with the right player and the right support. I am on Battle Spot and Showdown a lot, so I don't actually run into these two as often. Um, and when I do run into it, I get pretty afraid because it's pretty strong, and I'm kind of glad not as many people are playing it right now because um, there is a lot of potential to it. And it is, uh, it's a combination of Amoongus and Mega Tyranitar. Um, I do want to just give a shout out to Eggy Emporium and Wolfie. Wolfie, this is his article. Uh, he covered, he did a really good in-depth analysis on these two. Um, and so if you guys ever have a chance, check them out. Good stuff, good VGC stuff. All right, moving on though, I just want to kind of cover the basics of the, the combo. So this kind of a combo, instead of just being like really offensive, like a, like Disquake, this is instead, is like a, it's a status and boost combo. So what you do is one of your partners is there to um, status the opponent to slow them down to or to hinder their, you know, their offensive pressure on you while your partner goes ahead and um, boosts up. In this case, your status is mostly Spore and Rage Powder from Moongus and clearly Dragon Dance um, from Tyranitar. So you're, you're, you're really just trying to distract with one and set up the other one so you could just sweep the rest of the match. You don't see a lot of setup in VGC, but when it does happen, it's really scary because you get one Pokemon taken out too, and it's just, it's not good, especially for the opponent. I mean, it's good for you if you can get it off. So like I said, I do think it's flying a bit under the radar. So if you're at a loss for a team right now, or if you want to try something new, definitely give this a shot because um, I just played five or six games with it um, and I didn't even lose one so um, you're gonna see my first battle in the next slide I think I think I give you guys yeah preview here so this is my first battle I just was like I'm just gonna however it goes I'm just gonna upload the first one um, you can see my choices over here my four I picked were um, I laid Amoongus Scrafty with Tyranitar and Talonflame in the back so I'll just let you guys watch uh, I'll just watch you guys I'll let you guys watch this um, and that way you have like kind of an idea of what the team does. Okay, and don't judge me, that was supposed to be Gale Wings, but like I said, that was my first battle of the day, so... I'm not complaining, like it got burned, but it's definitely supposed to be Gale Wings. I switched it after that battle. Also, don't judge me for the repetitive spore in that spot. There's no reason he should have left that in. For any single reason that I can even imagine. So, I just thought he was going to switch for sure. Either the first or the second time, it didn't really work out, but whatever. Look at me eat that up. That's a super effective attack from a Mawa. I know he didn't go huge power or anything, but still, 10% is nothing. Also notice how I got like all of my health back on Amoongus there. And the crit on Kangaskhan doesn't matter because I was going to crunch it next turn right here. It was a Crunch Spore fired in that same spot. I knew Mawa wasn't a threat. Crunch would have killed it without the extra damage on the crit there. I do want to note that Crunch would have done 63 to 75 percent on standard Garchomp, which would have definitely put it within Rock Slide range the next turn anyway. So that crit, as long as I didn't miss Rock Slide, wouldn't have mattered either. But that is a lot of strength. Think about that, Rock Slide, which is resisted by Garchomp, over 30 percent to it. Um, that's in that standard Garchomp. You know, everyone runs the standard Garchomp. So as you can see, it's really strong. I came out here, I hazed a little bit with Intimidate and Spore. Um, he did get burned with a good Talon Flame switch in, very clutch. And then, you know, switch into Tyranitar, get the plus ones, and I bounce around between Amoongus and Scrafty, faking out, sporing, and Rage Powdering, and you can't really hurt that thing. It's just, it's over there, and it's protected. Um, so, 
I'll get on to the concept and the other stuff. So like I said, um, status and boost. Status is the Rage Powder is for. Boost is Dragon Dance. And you are going to want to use Mega Tyrantar for this because he gets a huge defensive boost, which I'm going to cover in the next slide. So if we look at these two defensively, they cover each other really well. Now I know Tyrantar's got a ton of freaking weaknesses. Um, it's also got a good amount of resistances too, so it kind of makes up for that in itself. But the two of them together cover each other pretty well. So T-Tar, you know, it's rock. Stab covers ice, fi flying, and fire, all which super affect, you know, Amoongus. And it's dark stab super effect psychic. So you're really doing a good job of protecting Amoongus just by having a really fast Tyranitar out there. And in return, Amoongus can draw in the fighting water and grass type attacks that are going to threaten Tyranitar. So together, they work pretty, pretty well. Um, so T-Tar does have a massive base 164 attack stat. Like that is huge in itself. Before doing anything, you're just looking at a 164 and you're like, holy crap. Now, Mega It, you get plus 40 base defense and plus 20 base special defense. Not even counting in the fact that with Sand Up, you're getting the 50% boost because you're a rock type Pokemon. So, you've got this thing that's going faster and getting stronger. Amazing defenses, getting protected by its partner with all these different opportunities to even protect Spore, protect Switch and Intimidate, Fake Out, you know, spread damage, single damage. All sorts of stuff with massive attack and massive defenses. It's it's almost it just it even sounds ludicrous just talking about it right here. And so long as you have the right support, it's gonna work like that. It really is just going to tear apart, you know, opponent after opponent because it is so strong. They really have to stop it before it gets set up, because once it's going, unless you miss a rock slide, you're gonna keep going. So, um Wolfie's own personal spread for Tyranitar is this one right here. Uh, that's the one you saw in the video. I did use this one. Uh, this this set is never to it KO by Jolly Garchomp Earthquake, which is every single Garchomp unless it's Mega Garchomp. So you survive two guaranteed. That's amazing. That's awesome. You can literally, if you want to run Garchomp on your own team, you can Dragon Dance and Earthquake your own Tyranitar, clearing the field and setting up a Dragon Dance. Like That's definitely a very possible move. I know Cybertron used to do that with his Scissor. Um, Back in 2000, what, 13? And he, at Nationals, when he won, he'd set up a Swords Dance as he earthquaked with his own Garchomp and took less than half of his own health and then cleared the field on the other side to get up with that free Swords Dance. So that's also a very possible, you know, combo here, which is made stronger by the fact that Tyrantar is super affected by Earthquake, meaning your opponent will definitely, definitely not expect to see that coming. They're going to be like, okay, if he earthquakes, he's going to protect and not expect, you know, Tyranitar to do anything that turn, whereas you can really just go Earthquake, eat that up, and either go for a boost or kill the partner. Also, Mega Mawile's Iron Head. Um, this is, I assume, max attack, adamant, only one shots, three out of 16 times, which means that this thing's got a lot of bulk. Like, that's a strong-ass attack. Um, and to give you a little bit more reassurance on that fact, though, all 90% of the field now is playing something similar to um, Ray Rizzo's Maw Wild Wilds, the careful, careful one with a lot of special defense and very little attack, which has, which has no chance of killing or one-shotting. It can only do a max of 89% with play rough. So that's how bulky this thing is just inherently. Like you go, this is, that's ridiculous. Like something with huge power, you know, something, a mega Pokemon, you're not going to get one shot by Ray Rizzo spread, which honest to God, is the is the spread being played unless you're playing against a trick room team and then they're going to dump it all into attack so keep that in mind but otherwise you're pretty safe from even some of the strongest attacks in in the metagame right now uh then we're gonna look at amoongus this also is the amoongus you saw in the video i was running a koba berry i think that's awesome because talent flame's a little bitch and i would love to eat that up just spore it back do whatever i'm very specially defensive a little lacking on the defensive part um but it really survives everything it needs to. You get two shot by Mega Kangaskhan no matter what your defensive investment is. So you just don't take it as well with this set. The special defense I think really comes in handy because your Garchomp is so physically defensive. Together they, you know, you're not weak on one side of the spectrum. So nothing can't just blow through your team. Um, this set survives timid Mega Charizard wise heat wave in the sun. 15 out of 16 times without an Aqua Berry. That's nuts. That in by itself, the fact that it's a super effective attack from a mega Pokemon in the sun, like what? 
But it does. It survives it almost every single time without even needing an Akaberry, which is why you don't see Akaberry listed up there with um, the rest of those items because you really don't need it. Unless you're really afraid of, like, overheat. I don't I don't know. You really just... There's no reason to use it because you're going to kill it with Tyranitar anyway. Um, also, if you're playing Mega Charizard and you've got, you know, your own Mega Tyranitar, you can Mega on the same turn they Mega or Mega after they Mega and just get rid of that sun again. Like, it's just... You have a pretty favorable matchup in that situation. Um, this also still lives Mega Kangaskhan's return, which, like I said, is a 2 at KO no matter the defensive investment. Um, some compliments to this team. Salamence is one. It's got Intimidate support. It's very fast. Um, it's got Dragon Stab to help with Chomp because Garchomp can be a slight problem because he can Earthquake through Rage Powder, and a lot of them run Lumberry. So that'll help against that. Uh, Salamence also resists Fighting, Bug, Water, and Grass, all of which super effect Tyrantar, so he makes him a good switch it a good switch in pardon me it's immune to ground which is also something super effective to Tyrantar. and it and every salamence carries a fire type move which can be used to deal with scissor and scissor is kind of scary because it's got that bullet punch stuff you can rage powder it away but like i said the the amungus isn't as defensively strong so being able to switch in you know it, it you know switch into a scissor get the intimidate and threaten it out with a fire move that's also it's very clutch in itself uh, Rotom Wash, another great team option. As you saw, I was running Mo Rotom, which kind of does the same thing here. It's a little different. Um, Will O Wisp support helps against, you know, with Mawiles. You saw that Burn Mawile wasn't doing anything. I know it didn't make good, but still, it was literally doing nothing. Uh, so Will O Wisp helps with Mawile and a lot of fighting and ground types because those are primarily physical attackers. Uh, I can't, you know, in, in, unless Aura Sphere Lucario is the one special fighting, you know, real attacker that comes to mind. Maybe Focus Blast from Ryu Nicholas. Otherwise, they're almost all physical, so Will-O-Wisp is really helpful there. Um, Will-O-Wisp will also help Amoongus' low defense stats, so you can pair it up with Amoongus, Will-O-Wisp something, and then just, you know, have Amoongus absorb everything and then regenerate it out when it switches later. Um, potentially, you can put up a Light Screen support. Uh, with Light Screen, your Amoongus will survive a modest Charizard's heat wave in the sun every single time like that's what how much special defense you're going to gain with that so if you really want to run a defensive or a, you know a support rotom that's possible um it's stab beats fire and flying which uh threaten amoongus and water types uh for tyrantar because you have electric on this washing machine as well and then also something not to ignore is the fact that if you will wisp something you've also got sandstorm damage coming on and that's a lot of residual damage your opponent's taking every single turn so that's also a really strong point of having will wisp on the team. You can burn, they take that damage, they take Sandstorm damage, and you can basically protect every other turn, and they're just going to lose all of their health, you know, put put them into KO ranges and stuff. So that's a really cool way to play around the opponent. Um, Talonflame, Grass types ignore Amoongus' Rage Powder and hit for super effective damage, so you kind of want something there that's going to get rid of those Grass types. You can see I was running a Talonflame on my team. I brought it to every single game. I definitely recommend having a talent flame on the team um if for the sheer fact that maybe it might scare the opponent away from bringing some of their own grass types and if they don't if it's that doesn't scare them away then you still have you know your talent flame to come out and you can just pound something real fast um also bisharp is a is a cool team complement because intimidate will start nuking your boosts on tyranitar send out you know at the very least having a defiant user on your team makes the opponent wary of leading with Intimidate or even bringing Intimidate, period, because they don't want to start giving you boosts. Every time you get that Intimidate, you're actually going up one with Bisharp instead. So a lot of people just won't even bother bringing Intimidate, which is probably what you want. You don't even need to bring Bisharp there. They'll see it in Team Preview, and it will affect your opponent's decisions. Um, also, some pretty good, you know, a strong team complement to this team is Fake Out Support. It helps Dragon Dance to go up. It allows Amoongus switches for regenerate, you know, for its regenerator so you can get more health. Um, all of these also have access to Quick Guard, so keep that in mind if you need to beat Priority, aka Talonflame, aka, you know, Cat. That's what that's for, if you have room for that move, of course. I ran Scrafty, as you can see, but all these were good options. Mian Shao can one shot Kangaskhan with High Jump Kick, uh, it has access to Faint, and is a fast Rock Slider, another fast Rock Slider, so you don't have to just rely upon. Tyranitar to get the job done to beat Charizard, stuff like that. Um, I know it also has access to Wide Guard on Mian Chao. Mm, 
Yeah, it has access to wide guard. So um, keep that in mind as well. Mr. Mime also has wide guard access. Uh, Psychic Stab is helpful against other Amoongus and fighting types. So that's that's different out of these, you know, these guys. Because me and Chao and Scrafty are both fighting. Um, Mr. Mime can give you that extra boost against the opponent's fighting types. Because you do have a Psychic Stab or a Fairy Stab. I think, but he doesn't get Moonblast, I don't think. I think he only gets like Dazzling Gleam. And he's also got Icy Wind, which um, for Speed Control, super rare to see Speed Control in this format right now besides you know thunder wave on clef key which is annoying as hell i know so um pretty cool option there for the sheer fact that it actually gives you some speed control if you choose to use it scrafty of course intimidate um intimidate and fake out is why i use it on my team i brought it to my game you saw it go to work i like it a lot so i'd re definitely recommend that one as well all of these definitely give them a shot um, Mr. Mime just might be cool just for like the, the uniqueness factor. I know it's a very wolfy type Pokemon, so you can feel like you're being wolfy. Uh, counters to the core, stuff that's gonna fuck you up. Talonflame is gonna kill Amoongus. That's the end of the story. Uh, that's why I ran Koba. I don't want to be afraid of getting priority Brave Birded and dying. Um, there's a lot of good options for Amoongus though, so if you want to run different items, go ahead. I didn't run into any Talonflame. So I guess the Koba didn't come in handy, but I like having it in my back pocket. Uh, Intimidate users can give Tyranitar a lot of problems. We talked about this in the Bisharp section, since they'll negate the uh, attach boosts of Dragon Dance. Oh my god, let's just say attack. Um, so watch out for that. Uh, Scrafty uh, is really, really, uh, it's, a, it's a relatively big threat because not only does it have Intimidate, but it's also got the fighting type move, which will decimate Tyranitar. Also, Manextric, the running like bolt switch, can easily come in, bump and out, the out, and back in later, and later, to, you know, rap, rap, and lead it, you may even take a lot of his talents that way. So that's, so that's something to look out for. Um, Gardevoir, this one's a bitch. It's got some stab, super effective damage on both Tyranitar and Amoongus, so you definitely want to make sure you can take care of it. Now, if it chooses to Moonblast and you Rage Powder, you're going to eat that up just fine. Um, if you protect with Amoongus and go for a Crunch or you go for a Rock Side, you're going to, you're going to take, it's going to take a lot of damage. And, you know, if you made the right predict and it Psychics into Amoongus, you're good to go. So that can be played around, but it does have potential against the entire, you know, the entire core by itself, which is not something you really want to see. So make sure you have something or some way of dealing with Gardevoir. Um... And then uh, opposing Amoongus can bypass your Rage Powder and put Tyranitar to sleep, as well as heal itself out through switching out, so you can't just slowly whittle it down because it will just start getting its health back. So that those are two things to keep in mind. Also, anything with safety goggles, because safety goggles will allow you to ignore your own Amoongus. Like if, it allows you to ignore Amoongus' Rage Powder and you can't be put to sleep with Spore. So it's kind of like Amoongus is not even there for that Pokemon. So anything holding safety goggles... Now, what Pokemon typically hold safety goggles? Like um, Rotom Heat, maybe Rotom Wash. It's not a very common item, but it is something to watch out for. If you try to put something to sleep and it didn't work, that's why. And that's about it, guys. Um, for the Tyranitar Amoongus core, I hope you liked the video. I hope it gives you some ideas. Uh, at the very least, if you've got nothing on your plate, you have some free time, give it a shot. The, spread, the spreads for those two are there. You can feel free to use the same six Pokemon I did or use something else. Uh, the team worked, like I said, really well. Don't force the strategy, though. Don't just immediately go balls deep and go, I'm going to Dragon Dance just because I have to. You don't have to. Like, I won some games without doing it. So take some, take, you know, take your time with it. I started that game with Amoongus Scrafty, you know, fake out support spore kind of stuff. Do what you got to do to play the game, you know, and but just keep that in your back pocket. And Thank you again to Eggy Emporium for doing such great article coverage on VGC stuff and Wolfie for your awesome write-up. And I hope you guys enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.